What you doing, Casey? So, everyone's gonna want to update on that rollback. And today, you're gonna get that update. Not like a conclusion, so I don't have a conclusion, but an update. As you can see, and maybe here, it is running. And if you come with me over here, you'll be able to hear that uh, it's not running on all six cylinders. We've only got five of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing pulled up there, cleaned out everything we need cleaned out of it for it to go away for a while. Make sure I have everything, because like I saw some stuff in this that I need for that. This is kind of like my storage toolbox for the parts like that for the last while. So gonna get cleaned out, go through it, make sure it's all good to go. Then uh, we're gonna get it hooked up to the Zach lift, because tomorrow morning it's getting towed up over the mountains to the valley and it's going into the shop to get uh, whatever it needs done to be back to 100% good to go truck. Whether that is simply replacing the ECM, a single injector, or yank that stupid ass engine out of there and start over. I don't even know, but it's gonna get fixed. Oh, and uh, we have other updates too that we're gonna show you as well. Updates, people, updates. Lots of updates. The biggest and shiniest update, maybe? These updates I'm very, very proud of because I had some like say in, well, not creating this. Zach with created this. I had some say in like the design of this. Let me fold this down, I'll show you. Okay. Real fast. Um, one of the things everyone asks is what are the buttons I push when I get out of the truck to go do like a, a job or something? This is the cruise control and I push cruise control on and then I accelerate the engine to get a higher up RPM and don't worry about that check engine light, that's uh needs regen. Um, but that runs the PTO at a higher RPM for all the pump stuff. And uh, many people tell me, you don't have to click it a whole bunch of times, you can just hold it and it goes up to RPM. And it upsets them that I click it to do it like that. But I know it does that and sometimes I just like going, so that's what I do tour of what all the gauges and buttons in there are. I th it's like a spaceship. Stop, stop watching. Hit pause after I say this. Go down below and comment. Would you like a tour of what all those gauges and switches on the dash are? If you do and comment yes right now, then later in this video, I will do that. You look so, Ethan, <laughs> Ethan looks so confused right now. Like how are you gonna, so how we're gonna do it is, I'm just gonna do it anyway but they're gonna comment, which boosts the algorithm. Oh. And then oh, when I okay. do it later, it looks like, hey, Casey, listen. There you no, go. Oh, they know what's going on. But... I have no idea what's going on. It's called audience engagement, Ethan. Maybe You're some, not... maybe somebody will figure it out. <laughs> You're like, what did he just say? I have no idea. Also, nice hat. If you don't know who Big Dad is, go and look at Big Dad, Iron Mike Sharp. We love Big Dad. Big Dad, big fan. So a lot of people have noticed that I do not run the standard Zach Lift receivers. These are a one-off that was kind of like a tryout because the standard Zach Lift receivers have one vertical fork and one horizontal fork, or I'm gonna stand up the other way around, whatever. But uh, it's centered in the receiver, it's centered in height, so it doesn't matter which orientation you flip it, it's all kind of the same. Uh, Zach Lift had these receivers right here, which are a dropped receiver, or you flip them over, and they're a raised receiver. Hold on, my phone is ringing. Hello, telephone. Quit. Well, good morning, sunshine. Uh, I am playing with tow trucks in my yard because I'm bored. What are you doing? Why are you going to do stuff when it's inconvenient for me? So now that we were so rudely interrupted by Quentin, um, yeah, this receiver gave you a low option and a high option, as well as a wider and a narrower, depending on which way you flipped it and oriented it. And then while I was there getting this installed, I said, hey, if we put a hook on the outside here, this can go on here, and this is now also our sling plate for chain slinging trailers, chain slinging the back of trucks, stuff like that. And now you just made this do a whole other function. So they welded that hook on there, and this is what I got sent with instead of the standard Zach Lift receivers. I know a lot of people have asked Zach Lift and myself, hey, can we get those? The answer was no, 
because this was not the final draft. When we were going over all this, I sat down with Matt up there at Zach Lift and we came up with this idea where this gives you now an even wider offset when it's on the outside or you flip it over and it gives you an even narrower offset. Then when you stand them up, you now have this chain hook here and this is your sling plate for sling towing plus also your riser if you need a riser to get your forks up higher. And then you are your low, you are high, you are extra reach to the outside or flip it the other side like this. You are extra reach to the inside. And the good thing about that is another comment I've got a lot. If we bring this inside, come right back. Everyone who says, why don't you get the actual trailer hitch? I have one, but it didn't work with Zach lifts because this head is so wide, which gives the crossbar a ton more strength, but also made it where they wouldn't go narrow enough to fit my hitch adapter. But now because of this offset, we do. So now I can pull pinnel hitch trailers like this, or I can unbolt this piece. This goes in here, pins here, bolts here. We can pull gooseneck, we can chain this ball out, we can pull bumper pull trailers, two inch, two and five sixteenths, or we put our fifth wheel plate in here, and now we can pull fifth wheel trailers, either semi trailers or fifth wheel camper trailers off our fifth wheel hitch right here. So these receivers now allow me to use the standard hitch adapter that a lot of tow companies out there already have a few of them sitting around for piddle hitch, bumper pull, gooseneck, fifth wheel, whatever you need. This thing's got so many attachments, makes it makes your kitchen aid look like a budget option. I know, every time, but man, you have so much stuff in that truck, there's always another attachment. It's like, yeah, and half of them are still sitting at home. Yeah. So, these receivers, like I said, I sat down with Matt and we kind of came up with this whole design of what would work and what wouldn't uh, while I was getting this installed on the truck. Of course, they had to do a bunch of design and engineering and strength testing and then the fabrication and they finally sent them down to me for testing, so I'm gonna be trying them all out. You see initials stamped in there, just like all of their components. Josh is the one who welded these together. And you can see, there you go. Josh does a very, very, very good job. Yes, he does. Actually, all their welders do. In that shop, I did not see one questionable weld the whole time I walked through there. So I'm excited about these because it just gives so many options. One of them, by doing this and getting a farther extension, I grab a lot of trucks by the U-bolts in the rear when I rear tow them. And with the standard ones, when you were right out against the pins and that hole was right here, you had to be 100% dead, dead, dead center on that truck and just barely was wide enough to grab the U-bolts. Now you've got, I believe it's the three inch offset, so now you've got six inches of wiggle room to grab those things where you don't have to be so centered and perfect. You can stick this under there, slide these in and out as needed make life way easier. So we are going to flip these around, put them on low outside. They could be, if you flip them like this, they'd be low inside, high inside, high outside, all different options. But we're going to run them like this to tow that. Now some of you will know that yes, those are similar in nature to my fancy NRC receivers that I got. And yes, they are, but these things are so handy because they do so many different things, but they are so freaking heavy. As you can see, there's a whole lot more going on here and a whole lot more metal than on those ones, but those ones do everything that these do. Uh, one problem with these is yes, you can stand them up, use these as your sling plate, and here's your big chain hook that you chain sling from. But when you try to grab U-bolts with these, say I'm going under here to grab a U-bolt, on a lot of trucks, this hook hits the tire before you can get this out wide enough to grab the U-bolt. So a lot of guys will cut this hook off uh, because it sticks out too far when you're trying to reach under there. But then you just lost your ability to chain sling. So on these ones over here, instead of being on this side, the hook is over here on the inside and then you just flop sides. And now you can run your hook or your fork all the way right out as wide as you need under there without having something out here interfering with the tire or leaf springs or anything else under there. Very, very just 
simple little change of where stuff goes and simplifying this down to kind of get all of the function of those ones without all the complexity and weight. That's kind of my idea. I hope it works. Oh, and don't forget, there's more updates. What's the update? We did other things to the truck, remember? We did. We but did. We gotta take this off first. Yeah. That's way heavier. I'm gonna try taking that out. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that's got some gravity to it. That's for sure. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> that's no joke. have so much stuff. Those are very busy. They are. They're they very are. busy. It looks like a great a great tool. So they do they do so many things but the problem with that is they're so complicated and heavy like so you know like you gotta lay down and adjust the forks back and forth under a truck. Yeah. Once you put a fork in these things too now trying to Move and slide them back and forth into place while you're laying down or reaching under a truck does get forget about it difficult. Where yeah, that's going to be much easier. Strongly on Casey Liddell. Gee, why does Casey have a hernia? Couldn't tell you. Let's show the other upgrade to this truck. Okay. Ta da! We've got a new. Gnarly bumper on here. This is a herd bumper. Not sponsoring, I wish, but not. Um, very, very expensive, but if it stops a deer strike or an elk or something like that from wiping out that radiator, plus me to have to get towed home from the middle of nowhere, it pays for itself. So it's also got the big pull pin in the front. This truck had uh, the center pull pin option from the factory, which is a big, beefy cross member in the front that has a pull pin in it. Most trucks like that one don't have that they just have the individual light duty pins this one has a big heavy so that cross member comes out this bumper comes with its own completely new cross member it has its own pull pin you take that out open the latch that folds down and then you can open your hood to work on stuff you can see the new cross member all of that that is the new front cross member of the truck is part of the bumper so we took out what was there, that's the new one that goes in. You see where the pull pin mounts? Hopefully you can stick a yank and rope in there and yank on some stuff at some point. I think we can but figure then, that out. And this goes back up, automatically latches in place, and then it back in. Um, a lot of these have like a screw in the eyelet right here, it's what you have to unscrew up to fold it up and down. It's like 150 extra bucks for the latch to do it so easy and it's like if That's, I'm spending five six grand on the bumper why would I not spend another 150 to get the just it's latch? a no-brainer that's yeah. a no-brainer so this is done finally it's been sitting here for a bit um, makes me feel a lot better because I have come so close to hitting so many deer with this truck there's been some panic stops I almost hit a herd of elk one time you don't have a bike yeah that was scary that was the scariest one yet but uh this will make me feel a lot better because there might still be damage, might still knock out headlights, oh it's fine, I don't care. What I want is to protect the core parts that make the truck run so I'm not stranded out somewhere in the middle of nowhere waiting on a tow if I can even get one. Yeah, I was like, just solve all my problems at once. I was like, I hope he doesn't do it. Very tempting. 
no, I, I like that truck. It's a good truck. It's been very, very good to me. It's, it's done a lot of work. Like, that 40 TV, that NRC bed, like, that setup is very good and is very, very capable. But this one problem, it's been a big problem. Back my finger yesterday? Yeah, how Riley complimented me on my fingernail paint. At least there's some good out of it. Yeah. So, this truck has a really low oil pan. So I want the forks on the high side for more clearance, but uh, the forks won't fit under the axle if they're on the high side. So you pick it up, block it, then put your forks in and go grab it. And you can't use the Iver tool on this? Nope. No. The, uh, well I can show you why actually. On the internationals, you see their toe pins right here. They have this big loop down under, around everything, back up, and it's just these few bolts up here that hold it in place. So that's a whole lot of looping around and leverage. Uh, fine for a straight pull, which is what those pins are designed for, but to hang the truck from them and pry on them like that, it, it probably wouldn't hold up, it's not strong enough, so. Ivory tool solution is just don't make something that fits in those holes and then people can't do it. So makes sense. Yeah. You know the stupid thing? What's that? I knew the next thing I hooked to was gonna be this truck. And that these have to be on the high side. And I still put them on the low side. That wasn't that wasn't smart. On it my happens. Part. Short guys. Little guys. Yeah. See right here an example. That one needs to go in some. So I have to reach under. I need to slide it in. There you go. That was so much easier. Yeah. Than those heavy ones. Coming up. Yep. Just like that, Bob's your uncle. See the oil pan? Oh yeah, it's That's real. With these on the high side. Yep. Hey Casey. What? Is it okay to lay down on the job? You're a touch driver, yeah. Okay. Okay. Locks under here. Yeah. Oh, one more update. And today's sponsor of this video, Set Power Fridges. Come check this out. Oh yeah, we got, we got a new fridge. Yeah, we got a new fridge for the truck. Uh, the one I had in here was a Set Power. It's really great. I really like it. It's been awesome. But now I have this more center console shaped one here. You open it up, it's got the same amount of interior space just laid out in a different way. You've got your top compartment here for cans, you've got your bigger compartment here, and check out this cool water bottle they have. Here, hold that. What is, what is this? So this is your ice bottle or water bottle. I'm making it super dirty with my gloves, I shouldn't do that. But, ice pack, right? Okay. You fill this with water. Yeah. It freezes. It's your ice pack for a lunch box or anything like that. Or you can open it up and you've got ice balls. Like I could freeze it like that, open it up, and dump those ice balls out into your drink or whatever, and you've got little balls of ice. Huh. Or you could open this up, fill it with water, and you've got a water bottle. That's pretty sippy. You could pour water in there, freeze it into those ice bottles, open it up, fill it with water, and now you've got a water bottle with ice in it. We need to try that. Yeah, or you could just have one big ice pack. There you go. That's pretty cool, huh? So, this fridge here, uh, I've got it on 37. It goes all the way down to, I believe, negative 8. Runs off of 12 volt off a of vehicle, 110 volt 
bolt off of the house. Comes with carry straps here so you can carry it uh, because it's so well insulated. You can use this in your vehicle. You get to the beach, to the river. Hey, I have a beach right there. If you want to go play, you just grab your shoulder strap, you carry it with you, and now it's an ice chest that will hold your stuff cold for a good amount of time. The other thing being like this in the truck instead of that flat one I had down here, it opens my floor space back up. So getting in and out of the sleeper, I'm not stepping over that fridge I had, which was great by the way, but just the different layout of this works really well. This could be the center console in a vehicle. It could be uh, in the back of the blazer, it worked really well. Because it's not gonna take up a bigger space. It's gonna be a vertical right on the side, so we still have room for all our gear. Yeah. So go check that out. There'll be a, a discount link down below in my description. Set Power Fridges, big thank you for sponsoring another one of my videos and hooking us up with some really cool products. Thanks, Set Power. I'm not bragging, but yeah. I feel like that was a really good promo pitch for not practicing a bit and coming up with it on the spot as I was saying it. Uh, I, I mean, agree. all true, but... I, I would agree. That was like a, oh yeah, we're supposed to like, you know, you know, promote the Set Power product. Let me think of something right now type of thing. Yeah. I think it went well. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. I think Set Power Check them out. makes a pretty good product too. They do. I've never had a problem with one. Yep. Okay, drive line coming out. Now we just got to find somebody to sponsor a shop. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I need. I'd so much rather pull this apart in, uh, you know, concrete. Put me down on the gravel. Yeah. It's like acupuncture. Yeah. For, forced acupuncture. Yeah. It's been a long time since the driveline has been out of this truck. Yeah, you uh, working for it a little oh, bit? Man, that's a good sign. Oh, you know another question I can answer right now? Man, What's we that? have so many updates in this one video. Everybody asked, how long do the auto chains last? How much wear and tear do they get when you use them? Well, here's a truck that had them on there for a full season. And last year was a hell of a lot more snow than this year. Here's the auto chains after a full season of use. I just have them zip tied together so they don't dingle as much going down the road. But you can see the chain links look great still. Like, last year was a pretty heavy, see a long season. Yeah. And these things still look absolutely great. Not an issue with the one of them. Everything still looks good. Um, yeah, very happy with them. And one reason I've noticed, or my theory, of why auto chain links last a hell of a lot longer than standard chain links, is as soon as you're out of the snow, you turn them off. Yeah. So they're not getting beat down the pavement like standard chains are from the chain up area to the snow or from the snow back to the chain up area because you just turn them off. So the links themselves are going to last a whole lot more actual driven miles than a yeah. standard set of chains will. So for those that asked about longevity, thumbs up. When you're bending the breaker bar. Oh yeah, that's on there. That's on there pretty good. Jeez. Yeah, it's on there. In case you were wondering. I wasn't wondering. I, I had a suspicion. I did too. It's now confirmed. Where can I put these? Alright. Oh. You better make some room coming hold in. On, hold on. We can't get my GFYM hat dirty down here. No, no. Can you put that on the deck, please? Yes, I can do that for you. I, uh, I. I took my Cascade Heavy Rescue hat off the other day and I realized it was covered in grease after greasing the oh, truck. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I got more. I'm just say, we'll probably be all right. If you're wondering what GFYM stands for, uh, again, go look up Iron Mike Sharp or Big Dad on TikTok, the YouTubes, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, all the things. He's everywhere. And he will let you know what he GFYM will, stands yes. for. There will be no more doubt in your mind. Nope. Yes. Ah! Is that the cap? Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you grease your trucks. The caps come off really nice and easy like they should. Well, that's good. Damn it. <laughs> that's what I get for maintenance. Yeah, right? Oh, you haven't driven the thing in. Yeah, what's that tell you? I haven't driven it how long? It's still so well maintained. Yeah, right? I still, that's a bad part, I still greased it, like, <laughs> I still took care of it, like, maybe I was going to get it fixed and need to drive it again, I didn't want to waste the time having to grease it, if so, so I greased it. Okay. Where's my other freaking ratchet strap? Can I make a request to have my own shirt made? What do you want your shirt to say? Don't cancel me, bro. You already have, I hate Casey Liddell. I know.
I will make a cancel Ethan shirt. <laughs> <laughs> now, I bet that'd be a hot seller. I'd, I'd buy one. I'd cancel Ethan. Would you? I'd, would you cancel me? I'd cancel me. I'm gonna make like one cancel Ethan shirt just to have for myself. And every time you f something up. I'm just gonna put it on. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna put it on, or maybe a hat. Maybe I have a hat, so I can always have it at the ready. And every time you screw something up, like you know, like uh, disconnecting the gooseneck trailer and driving off without unplugging it. Yes. I can just go put my cancel Ethan hat on. And it's giving you a dis dissatisfied yeah. look. Ever. I don't even have to say anything. Just the hat of shame. Just, just take a dunce cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll make you wear it. <laughs> Why are we canceling Ethan? No. Oh, just ask Casey. Are you talking about today or in general? It is in general. So this truck has so many things over here. It's like things give you options to hook to, but are also in your way. Right. And then this one here can be a backup. Nice. Okay. All right, we're done under here. Now we gotta plumb air to this thing. All right. You think as much as I've had the hood open lately, I'd know exactly where to go, but I didn't look. I was gonna say, the air wasn't the concern here, so. I'll let it slide just this once. So this hood has these shock absorbers and it's super lightweight, small hood. You just pull it and let go and it just slowly settles down. That's nice. That big bastard up there does not. First time, yeah. first time I grabbed that truck, I pulled the hood, it got to the point, I let go. Okay, just kind of let go like that, just wham, got clocked to the hood. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, great time. Yes. It's almost like I put a valve on here. All right, Casey, what did we just learn? Learned that I'm super dumb and this truck has divided tanks in it. It's not this tank and that tank. It's this tank and that divided tank that has separate chambers. And when I hooked in one side of the tank, it didn't do what I wanted. Well, it was the, I was hooked to the right tank, the wrong end of the right tank. So. It was filling up secondary or only and not primary, so then I realized, oh, look at where the airline goes in off the air dryer to the tank, divided tank, hook into the other side of the same tank and it, everything works fine. Whatever. Eventually we got it. The easy way or the hard way? Let's do it the easy way. Forget I said anything. Okay. There's the foot valve. If we want to tie in so that when I apply my brakes, it applies the tractor's brakes through the air system just as if it were a trailer, we need to access this valve back here, not this front one, back here on the bottom side of it. And you can see there's a lot in the way. I don't really want to do that, even though it's a better way of doing it. So, you know what we're going to do? What's that? We're going to cheat. So this here is the brake buddy. It locks onto the brake pedal, locks onto the steering wheel. We still have to tie the steering wheel straight so it doesn't move. But then when you hook your service air to it, and uh, uh, Instead of going through and activating the brake through the air system of the truck, and it activates the cylinder, push down on the brake pedal. It's not nearly as like consistent of a braking as hook into the actual air system, but when you can't hook to the air system because stuff's in the way, this works. Okay, so this hose reel is my trailer supply air is what it's tied into. And the one back here is the trailer application, the service brakes. So this is running back to our primary tank and filling this truck's air system as if it were a trailer. And then this one here is running up to that brake buddy on the dash or on another truck you could put it to the foot valve under the hood. So this is supplying air to go down the road, airbags, release the brakes or anything else. This one here is what is activating our brakes and releasing as we do it with the truck. So a lot of people ask why I use straps sometimes and why I use chains sometimes and that I should always be using chains because the straps will never hold. I use the straps 
on the customer's trucks because I don't really care that much. I use the chains on mine because I really don't want to drop it. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> or it's because straps are way easier, more convenient, and hold everything just fine the same. But I'm using the chains on this one because we have a new type of receiver here that we never used before. And I want to see how they work with the chains because some receivers make it a pain, some make it easy. And this one was just really, really easy. Yeah. Or we go with the first one. Okay, we're all hooked up, safety chained, uh, supply air, service air, tow light on the back, tied down in the front, drive lines pulled out and tied up. Uh, it should be in the morning, we just air up, uh, turn on that switch right there for the tow light. Um, gotta put chains away. Yeah, these are the chains everyone said I should get, but you know, I have. Um, the fender strapped down on the back so it goes with it. And yeah, in the morning we should be good to go. We've got about a three-ish hour drive over the shop where we're taking this. Uh, up over the Cascades. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. If it's snowing on the mountain, the good thing is I have auto chains on this too. And uh, answer another question. Yes, you can put auto chains on trailers. Uh, and turn them on and off just the same. You can either get out and put a switch on the front of the trailer that turns them on. So all you need to do is pull over, flip your switch and drive off, or you can plumb it into the cab. What the heck? Uh, but you can plumb it into the cab just the same where they work from the cab just like your truck chains. So yeah, that's all the updates. New fridge from Set Power, big thanks to them. Bumper on the front looks awesome. Put some mud flap weights down here so that uh, next time we rip the mud flaps off, it's twice as expensive. Got the hooks all painted up. Uh, this is all ready to go. Yeah, we got all our maintenance done the one day. We got all our upgrade stuff done the next day. New seats should be showing up for the truck soon so we can get some good seats in there finally. Okay, because you asked for it, here is the cockpit tour of this spaceship I drive every day. And again, don't worry about that chicken light. We're gonna work on that. Uh, when it went into its last regen, it pulled that up and it didn't go away at the regen. So uh, plug it into it tomorrow with the scan tool to figure it all out and clear what needs to be cleared. Uh, anyway, so everyone comments on how many gauges there are. Like, man, you got enough gauges? And no, I don't. So in addition to all these gauges, we can come over here to this and we can go over to engine data and we can go through oil pressure, coolant temp, which those are gauges, turbo pressure, engine oil temp, engine exhaust temperature, engine load factor, that means what percentage of our horsepower are we using at the moment, uh, RPM stuff, speed, all that, uh, current economy, what it's getting at the moment, and then we can get, again go through all our stuff. We can also go into vehicle data, fuel levels and percentages, uh, how much air is in our primary air system, secondary air system, uh, tractor application pressure, which is that's how hard am I pushing on the brakes. So the harder I push on the brakes, the higher that goes up, lets you know how much of your brake pressure you're using. Uh, suspension pressures is how much air pressure it's taking to hold up my airbags. Transmission, forward rear axle, which this kind of copies over the gauges. I have a forward rear axle gauge right here. Rear rear axle, I have a rear rear axle gauge right here. Uh, outside temp, system voltage, fuel levels, and like between top and bottom, these can each do different things. Um, you've got a whole bunch more gauges in here uh, in addition to all this right here. So you'll say, you got enough gauges there? No, I don't. That's why there's even more over here. But let's start with this. We have manifold pressure or turbo pressure. This is the amount of turbo boost we're getting uh, right here. Underneath that is our transmission oil temperature. Again, those are two things you can also see over here if you want. Uh, engine oil temperature, battery voltage, engine coolant temperature, engine oil pressure, tachometer, of course, speedometer. Uh, this is our primary air system. This is our secondary air system. So reservoir A, reservoir B. Again, you see all that over here too if you want. Suspension pressure, so what we watch uh, on that gauge right here, you can see the actual digital readout here, but you can see an analog quick look right here. Forward or axle, that's my, uh, my two drive axles in the back. This is the front one or axle number two in this three axle truck. Uh, we can watch the temperature of that going down the road. Same with the rear, rear axle. Tractor application pressure, that's, that's how hard we're pushing on the brake pedal again fuel level and then these lights down here are our def fluid level uh, over here we have engine brake on and off engine brake high medium and low cruise control on and off then your cruise control controls 
This is your um, uh, force the truck into regen uh, button. Uh, engine fan, if you want to manually lock the fan on or just have it on automatic. Shutdown override. This truck has a five minute idle timer on it. So when you turn the key off, this truck will keep running for another five minutes. But if you want to shut down right now, you hit that and it shuts down. Also, if you're just idling, uh, same, if you're, just, if you're just sitting idling doing nothing, the truck will, after five minutes, shut itself off. Again, once it starts to go into that, it'll, it'll beep at you to let you know. You hit that, it gives you another five minutes. Or you bump up the cruise control just a little bit and that'll stop that too. This is the mirror heaters. So those mirrors have heaters in them to keep them from fogging up and freezing over. That's what this is. It's been on for like three months straight. Uh, mirror adjustment, mirror adjustment. Headlights, so it's marker lights. Headlights, well, I guess it helps if I have the gauges on. Uh, dash lights, up and down for brighter and dimmer. Dash lights, dome light, you know, like vehicles have. Uh, clearance lights, which are your those five lights on top of the cab. Your marker lights out here and the lights down the side of the Zach lift or trailer, if you have all that on there. Uh, driving lights, those are the ones in the bumper that uh, we don't have anymore because we switched the bumper. And I, I want to put some new, better, like fog light driving lights on the mounts that are on this bumper. So that one's currently not hooked up to anything. Mirror backup lights. So this truck has lights up there on the mirror right there. And I got some like 180 degree uh, cast lights and they sit on the mirror and they sit sideways. So when I turn on that, it lights up that whole area out there on either side of the truck because the problem is when you're backing up, especially the trailers on a truck this long, when you turn, the truck is swinging side to side and uh, you need to be able to see what's in this area next to you before you swing the front end into it. So that's what those lights there for. And that stainless steel guard right there is like, I'm sitting back with the camera right now. If I'm sitting where I'm driving, you see it blocks that light from shining back into this window and blinding me while I'm trying to look at that mirror. So has those on each side. Um, Beacons, those are my amber rotating beacons that are on top of the cab up here. Uh, they're 360 degree visible, so if I'm going down the road with an oversized load and it's required, which in a lot of places it's not, uh, or I'm sitting on the side of the road working, like that's what people see coming from, well, from all directions, uh, is the beacons. Those are the amber beacons. Utility lights here. These are the lights that are down here on the side of the cab that light up this whole work area here so that when you're walking around next to the truck getting stuff in and out the ground is all lit up right here without shining back at cars that may be driving by and that also activates these lights right here that shine down underneath so you can see what you're hooking up and doing down here again without shining like at traffic coming at you and then well, the other one i'll show you since we're out here those lights right there up on the headache rack. So again, those are those 180 degree views, so they light up all of this. And it's getting windy, but um, that is that one right there that says rack. And that's on a separate switch from like these utility lights. So if you're on the side of the road and you don't want to blind traffic with these big up high lights shining right back in their face, you leave this one off and you run these utility light ones that are down lighting up the ground below not shining in anything light bar over here are the red rotating light bars that are on the headache rack back there and since that headache rack sits below the top of the cab they're not visible from the front but when they're turned on they light up that whole white back of the cab in like glowing and flashing red which makes it very very visible without being blinding next row down here is the inner axle differential lock so forward rear axle, rear rear axle, a set, it's, a, it's a power divider, but essentially a differential between them, to say it basically, and that locks the two axles together. Now each individual axle is still an open differential side to side, but it's locked between them. So that's why you'll see one wheel spinning and not the other. Yeah, the, the two axles can still be locked together, but it can be spinning the one on the other side. I wish, wish, wish this truck had these two switches, which would be the individual axle lock. So you have full lock up in the rear ends. I wish I had that, but it doesn't have it. Uh, suspension height adjustment. This is to drop and then inflate your airbags for your air suspension. Fifth wheel slider to slide the fifth wheel back and forth. Hardly will ever, ever, ever use that, but I do sometimes. 
wiper on and off wiper high and low washer all that stuff okay. get down here backup alarm switch so backup alarm can be on or off and uh i need to put a backup alarm on this truck because it didn't do anything either way trailer dump um if you're pulling a trailer with a lift axle or a drop axle or dump the air out of it you can plumb this in same with what i said about the uh on spot auto chains you could hook something like that up into the trailer to activate auto chains or whatever else on the trailer and this is another engine shutdown override kind of like the one up here if you don't want the truck to shut off after time you hit it right there and i have my two on spot chain right here front axle rear axle well front drive axle rear drive axle and then you know your standard heater stuff controls like that up here standard radio standard cb that i don't have plugged in because i never listened to it and uh that is how the truck works oh down here there's also uh your heater and air conditioner all controls down here down low for the sleeper so you just reach over and turn what you need while you're in bed so that you can adjust your temperature from back there um and yeah that's uh that's how all the controls in the truck work so since you guys asked i included it in here